Hey, so Adam, um, what did you think of SummerSlam? I, you know, it was okay. It, you know, it just didn't have the resolution that I expected. Well, uh, you, well, you don't have to wait long. I'm, oh. I'm, yeah, I'm sure it was designed to get that resolution you're looking for at payback. You know, yeah. On Sunday. Wait. Really? You know who I blame for this? Who? 5G. That's my line. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time for a brand new episode of As the Buckle Turns. I'm Adam. I'm Tim. And this week we've got a we've got a show for you. We have a show. Yeah, um, hey Adam, I know we have a, a docket and everything. Yeah. Um, I think we actually have to add something to that docket. Oh we, God, we, we completely we, forgot about. What are we adding to this? Um, you know, go over takeover. Oh yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot about adding that in there. <laughs> so did I until uh, just now. <laughs> I, I've got the uh, Summer Slam, uh, Summer Struggle predictions from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Because we're skipping payback because, <laughs> sweet Jesus, a one week build. Actually, more a one-day build, because they had to build it on Raw, because, you know, SmackDown's tomorrow night. Yeah. And you're really, you're going to win. Well, wouldn't wouldn't stop them, because WWE did that entire um, build, was it last year, when they had two pay-per-view, three matches announced, and then they announced everything else the day of the pay-per-view? Yeah, it was either, uh, what what was it, like two matches got, got added on... No, one match got added on Friday night. Yeah, and the on rest, SmackDown. And the, Everything else was either Saturday or Sunday morning. Yeah, and we had to predict. We we predicted the three matches, and then we just said, you know what? Screw it. We just scrapped that pay per view because we were like, no, stop doing this. So yeah, seriously, WWE, stop giving us a one week, two weeks for a build up to a pay per view. Yeah. So I mean, we, yeah, I guess we should probably talk about SummerSlam. But I think that Cold Wolverine cover, covers it all. It was <laughs> a show. <laughs> it existed. I know a lot of people who said it was good. They liked it. I'm eh. <laughs> uh, eh. Eh. I hear you on the eh. Eh. Um. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the, the fun stuff about <laughs> the <sighs> SmackDown and SummerSlam a little later. Okay. <laughs> but... All right. Let's do this. Let's get to the predictions. Uh, well, I mean, we can go over uh, TakeOver nah. Triple X. Mm-hmm. You stop talking about porn. We're uh, on no. the air. TakeOver 30. Well, say that. <laughs> but they called it Triple X. X. Triple X would mean 30. Yes, in, in Roman, Roman numerals. Yeah. But you say it 30, not Triple X. Oh, no, it's Triple X. <laughs> It is some hardcore hitting action. Oh, wow. <laughs> skin on skin. All, right, All night, Saturday night. Let, yeah. Let's just go over okay. um, some of um, our struggle. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, summer struggle. We've got... Uh, you know what? I can't keep looking away. I gotta bring <laughs> it up on my phone first. I'm sorry, bro. These How things happen. You? How dare you? I-, I wasn't prepared for this. It's not my fault you rearranged your entire room. Yes, I rearranged the office so that I have to face a completely different way. <laughs> okay, NJPW, Summer Struggle. There we go. Let's get into this. Come, come on, scroll. Thank you. This is the no no, yep. There we go. August 29th. Yep. Matches. Okay. So oh, technically, breaking news. NXT yes. He drew 824,000 viewers last night. Woo! It was down from 853 from the week before. Uh, you know what? That's still, you know, <laughs> uh, on. Th- Wait, Saturday show? No, that was AEW. Okay, what what was this? Oh, NXT. Yes. With no one, no competition out outside of like. Oh wait, there wasn't even basketball last night. No. 
Uh, so there was no competition, and they still lost viewers from the week before. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to... You you guys as the audience, you can hear that. You can see that. That's a thing that happened. Oh, also, once again, I got to thank uh, our one, one viewer who uh, actually leaves a comment. Thank you, Ryan, once again. You're the one who gave me the, uh, the heads up about... Uh, Pat McAfee and uh, I don't remember his friend that you I don't see it in front of me right now that we're going that we're in Orlando um, for uh, NXT but they were not he was already talking about how Pat was set for the the match before WWE had even announced it yet I mean we saw it happening because we see that in wrestling all the time but he w- he had cemented that information for me like a day or two before anybody else started being like, yes, this is happening. Mm. And stop it, talking to our imaginary posters. We don't have people who watch this show. It's just us. He's know, real. It's just us um, playing on the background so we actually get plays. <laughs> He's no a one, real boy. No He's one, a real boy. We don't even watch our own show. We just put it on the background. <laughs> I mean, how many people actually listen to their own podcast? How many people want to listen to their own voice? Everyone but us. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, let's get over this New Japan summer struggle in Jakku. Uh, no, hey, Jingu. Uh, we've got six matches on the card. Uh, hopefully they don't suddenly add more matches here. But, um... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Woo! All right, let's go over these matches here. We've got six matches uh, in no particular order other than the order that they are on Wikipedia right now. Uh, we've got Master Wato with uh, Hiro, Hiroshi, Hiro Yoshi uh, Tenzin versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru in a singles match. Tim, who, have, who do you have? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I got to look these things up. They both have Wikipedia pages. So that rule of the person that doesn't have a Wikipedia page doesn't get a, uh, a call. Hold on. I'm trying to find the actual, the event, the, the correct one. Cause I'm on the page that has, uh, it doesn't give me the option to see the 2021 on this one. I that, that's why I went to Wikipedia. I did. I'm on Wikipedia, but it doesn't give me the options of 2020, um, summer struggle. Oh, this is power struggle. <laughs> that might be why you're not on the right right spot, man. There we go. Whoo. Okay. <laughs> Matches. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's go with the, the one with the Y, because I am not going to be able to announce Yoshinobu Kanemaru? Sure. Okay, you've got Yoshi. And I'm uh, just going to take a moment and look at master watu what uh yeah you know what we are gonna go with yoshinobu as well all right stop yeah. copying me you're just gonna force another draw the third draw in a week whatever whatever it means that i'm getting better at this it means i just keep retaining <laughs> Fair enough. Or does it? <laughs> All right. Let's get on to the next match here. We have a fatal four-way tournament final for the inaugural King of Pro Wrestling Championship. We have four names in here. We have El Desperado, Toro Yano, Sonata, and Koz- Kazuchika Okada. So you're just going to put Okada down for both of us? Uh, you know... Toru Yano could pull out a win here. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, he's a bit of a comedian wrestler, but he could pull out a win here. Uh, see, see, I just want to see what you would say to that one, because I'm not going with Okada. I, I, I am going with... I, mm, <laughs> mm. I'm going with the person who I thought was for sure was going to be going to do something last time, and I was wrong. Evil's so tag team partner is yeah, in here. I'm going with Sonata. Sonata? I'm going with Sonata, because 
This way, when I'm wrong again, I can be like, well, it's just whenever I pick Sonata, I'm always wrong. Uh, you know what? I'm going Okada. I'm going Okada on this one. I have a feeling it's going to be Okada, but I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. All right. We now have uh, next up is a singles match for the Never Open Weight Championship. We have Shingo T- uh, Takagi, current champion, versus uh, Minoru Suzuki. Do we feel bad for Shingo? Well, yeah. <laughs> this is also a rematch from Dominion. Yeah. Basically, most of the championship matches are almost all. They're very, very limited on who they have right now. Yes, so. they are. Uh, I'm going to say champ retains again. Okay, Shingo T- uh, Takagi. Okay. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I, this could be, if they're going to change the belt, it will be here. But I'm going to go with champ retains. And I'm going with the most badass old man in New Japan Pro Wrestling right now, Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> <sighs> that man just, I don't, there's only one person that I fear more than him. Who's that? And that's King Haku. <laughs> Come on. Even like even Simon Miller got slapped by him and had a uh, whatchamacallit, a bruise for like a week after that. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Alright, next up we have a singles match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. We've got uh, Hiromu Takahashi versus Taiji Ishimori. So Bullet Club versus Takahashi. Uh, you get to go on first on this one. Oh, why, why, why you gotta do this to me? Because we're supposed I mean, to alternate. I know. You keep asking I know. Me I don't you know wanna... because I'm calling it out. <laughs> um, Takahashi is the current champion. Honestly, I want to see the Bullet Club get there, get a bunch of championships back again. Yeah. Even though it doesn't. I would have said Kenta taking this title would would be the better name to do it, but, but with he, him not interested in it and going instead for the uh, setting his eyes on the U.S. championship. Yeah, he, um, he's not interested in being in the light heavyweight division. I th- I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure WWE destroyed that idea from him. I, uh, probably, probably. I'm going with Taiji Ishimori. Stop copying me. You know, <laughs> I just... I, I can't wait for, like, a uh, number of the uh, junior heavyweights to come back. Yeah. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for you to realize that um, you said it first, so technically I'm copying you, but you didn't yeah. realize that. Stop copying me. <laughs> That's my line. Stop copying me. <laughs> All right. So you're also Taiji yeah. Ishimori? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Next up, we have the a tag team match for the IWGP Tag Team Championship. We've got the Dangerous Techers, uh, Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. Versus Golden Ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Kota Ibushi. Hmm. And it's my turn to go first, right? Sure. Golden Ace. Stop copying me! I'm not. I didn't even know what you were going for first. But you want Golden Ace as well? Uh, put me down for Dangerous Tech. Okay. Tigers. They won it at Dominion, so maybe they'll actually keep the belts. But yes. No, I might like say I picked them <laughs> for New Japan. They'll go the other way. Of course. This seems how it goes for uh, New Japan. If I pick them, <laughs> it's it's probably going the opposite direction. It's only New Japan usually this happens. <laughs> All right, and, and just put evil down for both. Of us. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, both yeah. know we're picking both picking evil. The last match on this card right now is the singles match for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. We have Evil currently holding both both belts in a uh, rematch against Tetsuya Naito. Uh, yes, we're both going with Evil on this one. Yeah, because taking it off him would be too soon. Oh, totally. Um, um, even if he had, even if you, if, I mean, if he had the, uh, what is it, um, the G1 had gone on, and then he had some good showings in that, mm-hmm. even if he didn't make it to the finals or anything, you could still, and you only wanted to take it, take it off, you could have, but it looks like his first defense, so you want to at least establish that. I hear you. I hear you. So... 
But those are our predictions, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, if you could go ahead and give us down in the comments your predictions for this. Uh, honestly, I think it's going to be a pretty good show. Usually, they have a good show anyway. Um, yeah, just let me let us know what y are you going to be. Actually, by this point, <clears throat> when this show, when our show goes live, that has already happened. So, were we right? Was Tim <laughs> Tim one hundred percent right? Was I one hundred percent right? Were we both gloriously wrong? <laughs> Who and, will have the answers? And since there's only six matches, we could possibly draw for the third time in a row. Exactly. But that's right. Exactly. We don't draw in um a in, in this prediction anymore. But since our question for takeover, it all re resolves around where Renee goes. We're waiting for that to happen. Because <laughs> I literally deleted the other question that you wouldn't delete. <laughs> no, you leave that question. <laughs> I deleted it on purpose. You son of a, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I told you. I was, <laughs> We were waiting for, but we are going to actually solve who won SummerSlam. Um, we'll be resolved tonight. We won't know until next week because, yeah. Um, but going in, we'll know who is Tim, Tim's going to run a simulation of a match. And the oh, winner no, of the, no, no, because we're going to predict who's going to win the number one contendership for the AEW Tag Team Champions in their um, gauntlet match tonight. I totally forgot about that. So, um, so you have FTR, the Young Bucks, the Best Friends, and the Natural Nightmares, who are all in this tag team tournament, a uh, tag team gauntlet match. So we're we're both agreeing that it's FTR. No, because I don't think it's going to be FTR. <laughs> who are you? Are you putting your bet on Best Friends? I think they're going to. You've had a soft spot for the Best Friends this I, entire time. I do, but like, here's the reason why: because I think because putting. FTR into the title picture before the young having a match with the Young Bucks? No. No. Have the match with the Young Bucks at All Out. Then you can put them into the title picture. See, I would like to see it be the Young Bucks again. <laughs> I mean, the ones who finally actually take the belts off them? Yes. So they could then drop them to um, FTR you know, at full gear. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the same time, the Amer the Nightmare Family or Collective... Whatever they're calling themselves. The Natural Nightmares. The Natural Nightmares. Oh, yeah, because it's QT Smith and... Uh, oh, my God, actually, Dustin. that... And Dustin. That would actually... I like that idea a lot, too. I, you know, kind of giving Dustin his one last championship before he rides off into the sunset. But they haven't really been pictured well on Dynamite. I know they do a lot of stuff on Dark. Yeah. But I haven't really seen that them be used that well. Um, on Dynamite. But see, what I'd like to see because of the attack um, last Saturday um, by the Dark Order, to see that QT Marshall and um, Dustin are, are pulled from this, and you put in the Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers win it. Okay. Because they did an angle with the on the blade, on um, the Butcher and the Blade, costing them the match. Like the, the miscommunication that started. And then you had, um, what's his name? Yes, that guy. Ah, uh, he one of the challengers who came. They signed after Cody's TNT Championship. He came out and Zeki like, like, "You could be tag team champion. Why aren't you tag team champions?" Put them all over and then basically winked as they hugged. It's like he's manipulating them all. Um, <sighs> but I, put the Lucha Brothers in that spot. Have them win. Have them beat Hangman and Kenny Omega to have them have the belts. And you can do the FTR. That's what I would do. Or. But, I have another one. If the uh, American Nightmares or the, you know, the collective, you mm -hmm. know, those, those guys uh, have them because they were attacked out of the match. Put Santana and Ortiz in there. They already have a feud with the best friends anyway. So now you have two different uh, two different storylines going on yeah. at the same time. I'm o and I'm OK with that, too. Um, I would just say Lucha Brothers just because of just to get them. All right. they, they weren't really used as much because of the um, closing down of the country and everything. They weren't on, so used as a building platform. But I'm okay with the inner circle doing it as well. Uh, um, you know what? I'm going best friends with this then. Stop copying me! You son of a! No, oh, no, no. We already determined that. Never mind. So here's, um, what, we're, no, but here's what we're doing because we're doing we're picking the order. Oh God! So we're gonna have four options. Okay. So mine is the first one is the best friends. Yes. So, you can pick, you can't, 
be the best friends. You can put them in your somewhere else, so... Uh, we'll go with FTR. Okay, so who's your second one? Uh, the Young Bucks. Okay, well, that's good, because I was going to go with the FTR as my second one. Okay. <laughs> because I don't want to. I don't think they're going to. I hope the right call is not to have them go into it. I won't complain about it, because I know the match will be pretty good. will be really good. But at the same time... <laughs> um, and my third pick is going to be uh, the Young Bucks. Okay. With friends, uh, FTR, and then Young Bucks. Uh, I I have it, well, I said FTR, best friends. Sorry, I'm writing this down right now. Uh, my third is. Well, it, it kind of eliminates what you yeah, can be. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, QT Marsh, the natural nightmares. Natural nightmares. Yeah, that kind of limits me there because yeah. I can't pick young bucks as yeah. well. Well, and that because my last one is the natural nightmares. But if they are removed, the natural nightmares filter filter in to what our team yeah. is replaced. Is them. Not that they're actually being replaced. We don't know this. Yeah, um, I, I put that in that whoever it's natural nightmares or whoever replaces yeah. them. And I, my final is of course the young bucks. Yeah. I don't really see the Young Bucks winning here. No, neither do it's, I. It's not conductive to their story. Now, I will say this. I do have one alternative. This does not go to our predictions anymore. Okay. This is just another, another side to it before we get into TakeOver um, 30. Um, is I, There's one matchup I'm okay with that involves FTR going after the tag titles. That is Triple Threat. Young Bucks, FTR, best friends. And, no, Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega in the tag title. That's the title match at All Out. That is the only way I'm allowed. I will. I'm okay with. And it is they get the pinfall on the Young Bucks to win the belt, so they don't actually even pin them, which would then later. And it's all because of a screw up because Kenny and Hangman, and at, one of them turned heel on each other. <laughs> at one point. Uh, I would like a moment where the Young Bucks and FTR <clears throat> are facing, like, you know, facing down in the ring, and Omega and Paige roll in, mm -hmm. and then accidentally stand across from each other with <laughs> the other teams, and you just have a moment where they both look at each other and like, really? And like, and, uh, and Paige is the first one to be like, no, really? I don't know why you're, you're standing with the Young Bucks right now. They're jackasses. <laughs> like, I, I know that I, I have not done well by them, but at the same time, they've treated me like shit. So, you know what I'd like to see? Do that same setup, too. But then they, they look and like they look and they realize, oh, they're lined up and they're like... And they like, step together. They, yeah, they just step off. And they're like, oh, like, wait. They're like, oops, <laughs> but, but sorry they, about they, that. They play it off as like, oh, they missed their mark. Yeah. But they then they look at each other like... You get a, <laughs> and then... Like, it, and it starts off with Paige giving, giving, like, off to the side, just She's being like, like, really? You, you, yeah. you sided with the team that we have to fight against right now. And, like, Omega's still giving Paige the look of, like, you did the exact same yeah. thing. Me? You did the same thing. I stood on the wrong spot. You <laughs> stepped right to that. <laughs> we, can we just admit, we both missed our mark. Yeah, we, we missed our mark. That's the story. God. No, that should be later in the matchup, like, outside. Like, they're recovering. You just hear them starting to argue. It's like, no, I did not miss my mark. It's, it's like, like, but you know, lined yeah. up with them. And it's like, it's like, no, it's like, we just missed our mark. That's our story. And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. We agree. We, we, agree. Good. we got that one. <laughs> and then they roll back in. And like, the both, both actually make full eye contact with the camera that's right near them, too. It's just like, okay, that, that's, the, that's the story. Oh. <laughs> and and like, get back in. And then like, Go, go! And then you hear like a pinfall being happy and they run into the Go, bring go, it go, up. go, go! Go, 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 go! <laughs> that would be hilarious. See, I, I do enjoy the fact that there is a level of natural comedy in AEW yeah. that you only see from people having fun together. Oh, yeah. Like, where you're like, no, we're continuing this serious storyline. You know, Adam Page has a drinking problem. <laughs> But he's doing cowboy shit, so ha 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 ha. See now, if they did what they were, they're but doing he's not with... getting himself in trouble yet. Yeah, well, if you they did what they've been doing with Adam 
um, page uh, since like the whole drinking thing. Yeah. Back when they announced he won the spot to face Jericho, something okay. similar to that. It's like putting putting him tag teams with Kenny. Yeah. Um, at like the the um, Fighter Fest and Fight for the Fallen, that would help elevate him to a, another there. Oh yeah. Um, stuff like that. That would have been a little bit better. I mean, yes, he still would shouldn't have won the AEW World Title of that. No, um, not that but early. It would have been a better positioning. Yes. Um, and now now, um, you could easily if. When Kenny and Paige um, end their tag team, you could probably put Paige into a world title picture. Um, he still I'd, isn't. I I'd, don't think he's ready for the title. I'd like to have him in the TNT picture that's first. What, that's what I would do. Um, because you could do that, then build to him um, um, towards that because you'll get that better. But I, I would also like to see him because, I mean, think about this. Um, he's beaten the Young Bucks already. Mm-hmm. That's two members of the elite that he's beaten. TNT Championship. He actually beats Cody for it. Dude, Cody lost it. I know, but Cody gets it back. Down the road. <clears throat> Cody gets it back, and Paige beats him, or Paige wins it and defends it successfully against um, against Cody. Okay. So that's another member of the elite down. And then doesn't actually get to face off against Kenny until Kenny has the championship. Then he beats the last member of the elite. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I am a holds up the championship cuts the first promo of I'm done with the elite. This proves it. I've beaten every member of the elite. Mm -hmm. I beat the young bucks. Yes. I had Kenny's help. (laughs) Just Mm -hmm. like I beat the young bucks. Yes. I had Kenny's help. (laughs) I beat Cody. Uh, with absolutely no no help, except for FTR came out and helped me. <laughs> uh, I beat I beat Kenny just now for this with no help. So uh, stop saying Cody's going to defeat Cody because Cody is gone for a while. He, when he comes back, he's joined the Four Horsemen with still. FTR and Sean Spears. So <laughs> it's still on his path. Nope, because. Then Even Cody, better, he can then say that he beat all of the EVPs of the company. No, because then when Cody comes back, he's going to do heel shit to get a world title shot, even though he said he had no challenge for it. So you build uh, Paige as a face. <laughs> Honestly, he comes across more as being a face than a heel. And I feel that making him truly be a bad guy right now wouldn't work for his further career right this right this moment. I think it would work. No. No, turn Kenny into the cleaner, and have the cleaner turn on on Paige because Paige is suddenly not good enough for him because he's the cleaner and he's the greatest there ever was. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, this, oh wait, I, I'm getting uh, breaking news. Uh, I'm getting handed a piece of paper. Tim, you just picked that up off the table. I don't know what you're talking about. Breaking news. Um. Mm. Will Ospreay just signs with AEW. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just kidding. CM Punk has signed on to AEW to face Will Ospreay. <laughs> That's not true. That is a amazing dream, though. <laughs> just showing you how ridiculous it sounds when you do that shit. And? <laughs> Renee, this just in, Renee Young to New England Wrestling Alliance. Oh, She'll be part of the women's division. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got to go over NXT TakeOver 30 really quickly. Um, but I'm going to say this. Um, I'm usually jazzed for, like, TakeOvers. Yes. When I was watching it... You were, uh, me. It was a good show, but at the same time, I was just like... Nothing, like, really made me want to... Really invested in it. Nothing drew me in. Um, and... Part of it was, I think, because of the audience. Other part of it was, I mean, but, but, but it's any, Thunderdome now. They don't have Thunderdome for it take it take over. Oh, it's okay. A, um, but, it should have been <laughs> done that way because it's a special show. They did it from full scale. They're not going to take down the screens, so, put them over there, then take them back to the Amway Theater. No, I mean you could have just done it at the Amway Center. No. Yes. No. Giving it a 
big big venue feel that you should give to every takeover. No, um, but it was good. It was it, good. So so they just had a, a standard episode of Wednesday night NXT on a different night. No, the card was better than the North standard NXT. Ooh. But they had they had like the the developmental in the crowd and everything, but. It's eh. just like I don't know. They had the same setup for um, in your house takeover, and I was into that whole show. But except for the Adam Cole and um, hashtag Fire Velveteen Dream, yeah. Um, but overall, I was invested in it. But this, I just I, I didn't really care. Um, the the main event, um, yeah, I didn't like it. I mean, part of it was because the Karrion Cross got his tore his shoulder early on. Well, yeah, that happened. But we'll get through it. So let's move start on with the pre-show where Breezango. Um, defeated Oni Lorcan and Legge, Legge, da, da, Legado uh, del Fantasma. Yeah, that because I was gonna yeah, I'm, um, to become number one contenders for the um NXT Tag Team Championships, which they won last night. So congratulations, Breezango. It's Dude. about time you've actually helped some gold in WWE. Yes. Um, so it's been way too long, guys. Yeah. Uh, Brizango, when you first came back down to NXT, you should have actually won the North American Championship. You just mean for Tyler sh- Breeze? Yeah, Tyler Breeze. Um, just for a short run would have been great. Yeah. Um, but um, then we have our opening matchup. Finn Balor defeated Timothy Thatcher. Now, this was a brutal matchup. Yeah. This was a good matchup. This was probably... Uh, yeah, this was my match of the night. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Honestly. All right. All right. Um, it was really good. I mean, Finn got... It was kind of predictable what was going to happen. Finn was getting beaten down mostly. He was going to come back. But that kind of a was, Finn Balor match. Well, no. This was like a... It was the same kind of matchup he had with Damian Priest at um, last TakeOver. Okay. Um, Damian got some offense. It was to show, put him over. But it, Balor was going to win. Unlike when he was facing Gungaro or something like that. It was a like really just back where, and forth. Where you're just like, ooh, it could go it, either way. Yeah, you were not... It, he figured it was going to probably be Balor, but it could have gone any way. All right. Um, but it was still really good. Um, it put Thatcher over as a brutal tactician, working over Balor's um, knees every time. just going back to him, which was really cool. Um, then you had the ladder match for the vacant North American Championship. Yes. Which Damian Priest won, which was predictable. The finish was exactly how you thought it was going to be. Bunch of spots, people constantly teasing. Spot, 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 um, spot, who, spot. Who, who was going to um, walk out as champion. I will say this, not all of them were successful, but there were a few of them I was a little worried. But I never, not enough to the point where I was like, Damien Priest is not walking out the champion. Like, okay. I, that was my prediction. I knew it. It was clear as day, um, based on how many takeover matches he's had the last uh, few mo- on months. Takeovers, not months. Uh, <laughs> but also how they kind of positioned him. Yeah, it was just obvious he was gonna be the one who walked out the championship. Good, it was a good, good. decision, but it also got some of these other guys who aren't known as like Bronson Reed, um, Cameron Grimes. Stop doing the stupid, um, um, Southern redneck shit. I'm gonna take it to the moon. Oh. <laughs> you it's be, WWE, of course they're gonna do that be, stuff. You could be better if you just drop that stupid. Um, just southern southern, southern southern good old boy style yeah. but it was, that was a good matchup Cut, you, you should be more like Braun Strowman country strong <laughs> yeah um, then you have Adam Cole who defeated Pat McPhee which I don't know why that you convinced me that Pat McPhee was gonna they're gonna do the traditional WWE stand it's the standard th- yes. somebody comes from the outside and somehow wins exactly but I told you this is NXT it's not WWE but you said no, it's going to be still w- WWE. And I'm like, no, but I listened to you. I knew M. Cole was going to win here. Um, but Pat McPhee was playing the heel. Okay. Oh. Like, he was the heel. Like, he was the heel heel. Well, um, I mean, yeah, he's been kind of doing that. A lot um, of taunting of Adam Cole building in, building yeah. up to this. I will say this. Pat McPhee, yeah. he took spots that I was like, wow. Um, he did a spot off the top rope onto his buddies in... Um, undisputed era. Oh, him out. He the fin- the finish. Cole went for the um, last strike, but he said no. He hit the um, Panama Sunrise, and he took it hard. Like he took it. That was good. For I him. I thought they were gonna go with the uh, out of nowhere Randy Orton with the punt. Oh no! He, um, Adam Cole kicked out of the punt. 
What? He kicked out of Pat McPhee's punt, not Randy Orton's type but, punt. But Randy Orton isn't a professional punter. I know. Pat, Pat Mc... McPhee is a professional punter. He knows how to kick things. Yeah, but see, Randy Orton knows where to kick. Pat McPhee doesn't. Randy yes, he can... does. Randy Orton kicks you in the head. Pat McPhee kicks you in the chest. Oh. Okay, that, that's the reason for the kick out. I thought it was a head kick. No. Was... And if it was a head kick, you don't kick out of that. No. And that's where he kicked him in the when he in the spot. Yeah, too. He kicked him in the chest when Michaels was holding him. I don't know. I mean, it's one kick. thing if you're if you're kicking like the upper chest, like shoulder, neck. He, he, that that like right that, here. It's another thing if you if it's under the armpit. Yeah, but no, like he hit like right in the middle of the chest area, like yeah. where you hit where you kick for you do the slap. Yeah. Um. So it was still was brutal, but like it looked hard, but. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not the Randy Orton. I'm gonna punch. If I'm gonna punch you, I'm gonna punch you in your goddamn head. Yeah, or right. uh, you know, Seth Rollins' curb stomp. Yeah, but it was still a better matchup than it should have been. It went longer than it should have. It went for 16 minutes and 12 seconds. Yeah, it didn't need to go that long. You could have done 13 and been fine. Okay. Um, but it was better than I thought it was. But then you had Io Shirai defeating um, Dakota Kai. As soon as this match came out, I knew Dakota Kai was losing. Knew I was going to lose this matchup because of that. So I got like, to yeah. win. Um, because as soon as that came out, I'm like, which means once she won, I'm like, Karrion Cross is winning. <laughs> which I picked, and you didn't. So, whatever. Um, it was actually a good matchup. I wanted Keith Lee to stay in, <laughs> in NXT until there was a live audience for him to go up. And hope, and so they wouldn't um, botch his. Um, his, Which they kind of did. <laughs> How dare you admit that, say, he, his botch was going up against Randy Orton and then being disqualified and losing his date. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and changing if, his wardrobe, changing his music. Oh, that's right, because they're being encouraged to change um, their music because their deal with CFO Money uh, is they get half the royalties. Yep. And they've been asking people to change that. But they're not happy with the music that they've been in pitch with, so they outright refuse. Yeah. Apparently, um, Keith Lee's new song will be getting lyrics for Payback. Okay. Um, so, um, but I, you know, they need to. You need to get better people in your in-house team um, to get better music. Yes. Um, because there's some really good uh, music from NXT that. And stop hiring a, a contractor for your music, because that will fuck you over. Yeah. Because as soon as they're done with you, um, yeah. they're and, really going to push for that. And no matter what, <clears throat> they will push for to have ownership over their songs that they've created. If you hire somebody in-house, you tell them that they work for you, and that you own the things that they create because yeah. they work for you. Well, they can say claim ownership for outside use of WWE, but they can't like stop them from using the the music yeah. because they were hired by WWE to do that. Yeah. Um, and and the way that they were hired wasn't that they were an employee to make music. No. They were a contractor. Yeah. To make music, which, which means is, that the much like uh, wedding uh, wedding photographers and wedding DJs. Yeah. A wedding photographer is just there to take the pictures. They own the pictures because you've contracted them to take pictures. You then have to buy those pictures from them. You, but when you're, that's all part of the package, though. Yeah, like I when know. you're buying the package. But you um, don't own the pictures. They can, you can, depending on what you're doing, they can have limits of the photographer's use of them. Yes. But all photographers will say, we have the right to use these in our marketing for our company oh, yeah. only. Like, that's what the standard is. Oh, yeah. Um, they can't go and sell them out to no. be used in picture frames without consulting them. I mean, if you, they could if they set that with that in the contract. Exactly. But most people don't do that because, why? And then we have the main event where Karrion Cross won, but then relinquished the title last night because he separated his shoulder. <laughs> Ow. Um, I knew exactly this was going to happen because um, the people asked him about how he was feeling. He's like, I don't think I'm going to be out missing much time. I'm like, oh, that's you basically saying I'm still going to be here so you don't miss up. Um, your the announcement for take um, at, on TV. Yep. But as soon as it was announced, Kieran Cross is opening the show. 
relinquishing the title. That's how it's going down. Yes. But I will say this. Uh, the main event the for Super Tuesday <laughs> is going to be amazing because you have Johnny Gongaro, Tommaso Ciampa, who's returned, who's heel again. I don't think he's, he's heel. He's back. He's not heel. He's just returned to the Blackheart tactics. Yeah. But he's going be he's still going to try, they're still going to try to push him as a baby face i think which is fine that's I how just, he should have been i just back. let him let him get pushed as he is you let know him, let him be a baby face who does what he does the yeah. black card that's what people wanted when he came back and we didn't get that because you had no plans to put the belt on him so you right. didn't want to ha- destroy that booking um now you also have finn balor Jeez. and adam cole bay bay um, he's got all four major, major players in this company right now going for that title. In a 60-minute Iron Man match. Honestly? My, my, my bad. I made, I, I made a mistake on that one. A 60-man Iron Men yeah, match. Yeah, Iron, Iron Men match. Um, I feel that it's... I, I kind of feel that because of how long it goes, mm-hmm. it leans more to Gargano and Cole... Yeah. But at the same time, because it's an Iron Man match, which means that you can get multiple pins and or submissions, and it's whoever has the most at the end of it, I kind of feel that it allows Finn and uh, Champa to basically bounce in and out. Yeah. Because I, I know that Finn can do the long matches or anything, Yeah. but his story in the WWE hasn't been that. Well, no, in WWE, I mean, roster wasn't that. NXT, he could have some long matches. Well, yeah, but I mean, still. But he, they're not relying, they're relying on his NXT booking. Yes. Um, since he came back. I say... Which I, still isn't 60-minute matches. No, but, no, but know. he can still, we know he can go them, but he's done longer matches in NXT. Um, out of these four, who do you think should walk out with a championship? Uh, Gargano. Ooh, really? I really feel that it's Gargano to put the belt on right now because of his... Well, because of the fact that no matter what, mm-hmm. out, coming out of this, you still have... You can still use all four people in storylines going forward for that championship mm-hmm. and then have Karrion Cross when he fully heals up, come back and wipe everyone out again. Mm-hmm. And you're like, thank you for being the monster you are. I'm gonna and la- take the belt back. I'm gonna laugh is that when he gets healed up, he's called right to the main roster. <laughs> I mean that that's possible too. Um, but no, I think uh, she put it on Finn. I mean, I I would like Finn to have it. Mm. I'd like to see him put the the belt on Finn, especially since the obviously the plans were to to do the whole um, him and Volter matchup. Yes, uh, it doesn't look like he'll be able to go back. He may not be able to go back for Dublin takeover. If they even do Dublin's takeover, which you do know they're starting up um, tapings for UK, NXT UK yes. um, in September. So they could still possibly do it, um, a takeover in October, but they may push it back again. Um, but it will be, it just may, Finn may not be able to go over the, for it. So put the belt on him now. He could drop it when he can finally go back and you could do that that match with Volter. Um but, um, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, so Volter. Yes. Um, he's going <laughs> to. I don't think they planned to do this, but the third ever NXT UK champion um, may tie or break the Pete Dunn's NXT rec- UK totally. record. Totally. Like, <laughs> it was not planned, but COVID 19 <laughs> will allow a record to happen. Just because. Like, a good record. COVID 19 said, fuck you, we're doing this again. I like these long records. <laughs> I uh, love wrong, long reigns. <laughs> and Vulture is going that, to. That's why COVID 19 likes the U.S. so much. It's been a long reign for it. <laughs> oh, the reason. Uh, um, the whole reason why COVID 19. It hates New Zealand mostly, <laughs> <laughs> and South Korea. <laughs> um, the reason why um, the whole, all of COVID nineteen happened was because it's like no, Vulture must break the record. Yes. <laughs> the only reason why <laughs> <laughs> the deep state with five G and the surveillance birds <laughs> from com- China from China caused all of this to happen, <sighs> or so the internet told me. <laughs> 
we do we do know for sure 5G is part of it. Totally. <laughs> but anyway. I love the fact that we blame 5G for things that 5G could not ever actually do. You shut up, man. That is so possible. Th- th- both world war, all three world wars were uh, were started by 5G. Dude, dude it has not been f- um, three um, world wars. D- dude, do you not remember the war on the moon? Dude, first off, the moon's not real. Oh. So you believe yeah. in the moon. Shit, I forgot about that one. Dude, there's been five world wars. God, I missed those two. I forgot those two. I'm sorry, sorry, my bad. Yes. My, that, that's the programming 5G yeah. right there. And, because, and then you have the war, the, the war that was on Mars, but <laughs> we're not supposed to we be We don't talk, talk about that we one. We can't talk about that one yet. That's... That's still like three years before we're allowed to release that one. Yeah. <laughs> Those facts. All right. They are facts. All right. Uh, we, we should get on to talking about the other stuff now. Uh, all right. Let's pop over the Pacific Ocean for a quick second before we come back. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, we did go over the predictions uh, for Summer Struggle, but we also have a... Um, update a little bit of news mm. seems like kenta we said it earlier has his eyes set on the u.s champion he is planning he has promised to yeah. be the first ever japanese unit u.s cha- no, champion no 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 it is to be first ever non-american u.s champion ever dude we've been over this <sighs> kenny omega was is part of Canada, and Canada is part of North America. Therefore, American. Uh, it's a conspiracy, man. It's probably they call Canadians and Americans. In fact, we should be, actually, we should be the United Statesians. In fact, actually, we have uh, what was it? Lance Archer was a U.S. champion, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, let me let me look this up because I want to I want to make sure I want to see how many U.S. champions for New Japan are actually from the U.S. I'm pretty sure there's only been um, one, actually two because um, John Moxley is clearly. No, nope, Lance Archer was as well. Oh, okay, so there's been three. He, he's from Texas. Okay, so there's been three. Three out of five. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yes, Kenta wants to be the first non-American U.S. champion. America! That's not true either. <laughs> okay, oh, uh, Jay White. Jay White's from New Zealand. So you know, I'm talking John Moxley, Lance Archer, and um, what's his name with the dreadlocks? Lance Archer. No, he was a guy. He uh, did a tag team with um. Oh, da- uh, David Finley. Uh, Juice. Juice, yeah. Juice Robinson. Yeah. Yes. He's but, from the U.S. But Jay White was the second U.S. champion. I'm not talking about the, what number, who, what order. I'm talking about a total of three people have been American. Oh, yes. Yes. Out of five. But you said the first non American. Dude, do we, how many times have I covered this? Australia doesn't exist. It's New Zealand that he's from. What's New Zealand? <laughs> you what's, set up. <laughs> what's New Zealand? So Is, Kenta would not be the first non-American. There's no such thing as New Zealand. <laughs> points me on the points me on the map where New Zealand is. Right there. Right there. <laughs> That's a, a shut up. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> He'd be the go, first Japanese. Champion. I can go all night. <laughs> I'm eternal. If you respond, I will It'll respond. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, Jay White was the first non-American by your standards. No, I don't know what you're talking about because New Zealand doesn't exist. Point to me on a map. <sighs> Prove it. Point to me on a map. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because New Zealand is constantly left off the world map. It's because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Sometimes it is left off the world map because it's not that big of an island, it honestly. Exist. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, all right. 
So yes, Kenta does have his eyes set on yeah. the U.S. Championship. Um, I can't wait for Moxley to get back over there. Yeah, because he, due to his AEW um, contract, he cannot compete on U.S. soil for another company. No. That's why he wasn't able to show up at there, which led for um, Kenta to blast him for not showing up. <laughs> He's on like, the I, US. I know you're in this country. <laughs> not being able to show up. He was probably at the show. <laughs> backstage. Um, backstage. Like, I wish I could come out <laughs> there. But I can't. But I can't. If the show was any place outside of the U.S., <laughs> I'd be able to be part of this right now. No, I wouldn't be because I wouldn't be backstage because they wouldn't let me in because I'm American. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> Dang it. Nobody, so want- nobody wants us anymore. <laughs> they want our championships, but not us. Oh. Anyway, speaking of championships, we've got a the Pure Championship tournament. Yes, for coming a ring up. Of- yep. For, uh, yeah, Ring of Honor. It's gonna be uh, Tim. Six, you, you've got the rules, right? Uh, I can look them because up. I did not write them down at <laughs> all. Mm-hmm. I know that there's like a limit to rope breaks and all of that stuff, which I kind of feel is it's cool, but. I I enjoyed when when a uh, when a submission would get to a point or a tie up would get to a point where you you couldn't see the guys either one getting traction and the ref would just come over and be like all right break it up mm. we're resetting here if it did a li- little bit more of that if they got back to the rope instead yeah. of you have to break the hold be like no separate all right, got like in boxing when the ref separates them from a a, a a hold. Yeah, be like, all right, separate, fight, and now get back together. If they did that part of the pure championship, I would love it. I'd also I also enjoyed when Ken Shamrock was there, was a ref for them, <laughs> and would literally pick up both guys, separate them, and set them back down, and be like, all right, now go at it. Okay, so here are the rules. All right. Every match begins and ends with a Code of Honor handshake. So, okay. Um, each wrestler has three rope breaks to stop submission holds or pinfalls. After that, also exhaust his rope breaks. Submissions and pins attempts on or under the ropes go, are, are illegal. Closed fist punches to the face are not permitted. Only hand, open hand slaps and chops to the face are allowed. Punches to other parts of the body are permitted, excluding the low blows. The first pr- to use a closed fist will get a warning. The second will be a disqualification. Wait, let me just get a quick clarification there on that one. So a closed fist. So what you're saying is, as long as I don't punch him in the face, that closed fist is good. I am punching somebody in the dick. They just said, except for low blows. You were not paying attention. You just heard. You just heard. Close fist. I'm hitting someone in the dick. I'm gonna hit someone in the dick. Dick punch. Dick punch. Be like, ref, is that the Pope? Dick punch. <laughs> They're uh, like, but there's three other people judging the match around it. And <laughs> look, guys, it's the Pope. <laughs> dick punch. <laughs> As for the standard um, ring around matches, there will be a 20 count for the wrestlers on the floor. Okay. Outside interference will result in an automatic termination of the roster from the wrestlers for the wrestler that interferes. Yeah. There will be a um, two blocks. Eliminate single elimination. Round one has 15 minute time limit. Block semifinals has 20 minutes. Block finals has 30, and the tournament finals have one hour time limit. I mean, it, it works. I like it. Yep. Um, uh, we're not done yet. Oh no, you're not done yet. There's okay. one more rule. Oh god. Um, the last rule is there will be three judges at for each match for and time limit draws will go to the judge's decision. Okay. See, I I like I kind of like this. Uh, the outside interference. We're probably not going to see it in the first tournament. Yeah. Uh, probably a tournament or two down the road. This, this is not the tournament. This is just to crown the pure well, champion. Well, yeah, but like late because I think it this works better. Yeah. As a tournament style. Yeah. Than anything else, because you're like, no, no, all of you guys, you have to start. Like, yes, you'll have individual matches here and there, mm-hmm. but but it would be cool to see a guy like get disqualified or lose the match and then the person that they lost to which they think it was cheap and whatever that they lost to them because it was a quick roll up or the Mm. most devastating move in all of professional wrestling 
Uh, and they come back during the final and purposely get themselves fired. Mm-hmm. And then just, they basically pull a Matt Hardy. And every time, every show after that, they just attack th- <laughs> this guy over and over again. They're at home. They're on social media cutting promos like there's no tomorrow. And eventually they're just like, okay, we either have to hire this guy back or we have to hire a lot more security. <laughs> and you you put it as part of the storyline. Now, I, just do what you want. Just keep it as the championship that you're bringing in as it is. Okay. Um, the tournament, eh. They haven't... Um, Ring of Honor does do tournaments like New Japan. Yeah. So you don't need another tournament yes, like you do. that. You always need another tournament. <laughs> Until every, all you do is tournaments? Of course. And then it's you're a doing, constant rotating schedule of tournaments. And then you have tournaments within the tournaments? Well, of course. And then, because you got to have qualifying matches for the next tournament. Well, then you have tournaments within but that the tournament, tournament the tournaments. But that tournament enters in enters you into every tournament, if you're a winner of it, enters you into the ultimate tournament. So in other words, you just wanna do have Ring of Honor become a giant version of Walt Culture's tournament that they had, where they had like thirty six different tournaments as qualifying tournaments for a giant tournament later on. You just want that to be the entire thing, don't you? You know me so well. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Nobody else gets me like you do. Nobody. Stay, where you, stay in your seat, sir. You do but not. I want to hug you. No. I want to hug you. Stay. Let me hug you. No. Just let no. me. Damn it. Get him. Oh. The slap was worth it. <laughs> it was completely worth it. Anyway. You and your goddamn hugging. So, on to another championship, where in a surprise to absolutely no one, Cody has dropped the TNT championship to Brody Lee. And we have the debut of Roman. Oh, that's right. That was a, that, someone who that lied. That was the red herring. That was the lie that someone put out there. Even though the Rowan would be a cool addition to AEW... Kind of overall. But the uh, fact that um, Cody just didn't drop the belt, he got squashed. He got his ass whooped. Dude, well, like, once Co- Cody got some offense on right in the beginning, but once uh, Brody Lee got up and going, holy shit. It shows how Brody has not been used well by WWE. Yeah. But it, it, it reminded me of when him and Eric Rowan when they were part of the Wyatt family, originally... They were very... Like, those early matches as the Wyatt family against the Shield? Against the Shield. Wow. Against the Usos. Yes. The tag titles. Um, and just how much, uh, like, what Luke Owens could do... Luke Harper at that time yep. could do. Luke Owens. Luke Owens. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Harper could do. But now, Brody, this was really good booking. And since Cody is, you know... Um, Badly injured and won't be back for a very long time because he's totally injured. He's not filming a show <laughs> with Stephen Amell called Heels. Nope. Not at all. Well, that's all. Nope. That is, the heel show is a lie. It's part of the deep state. You know, it's but, like the cake. But it, hold on. It's a lie. But it, it's not just the deep state of the of the government. It's the deep state of pro wrestling. Shh. It's the deep state of NWA. That thing's been going on. The alliance is still existence here. The alliance. Do NWA, do stop. Stop what? before I don't the the microphones in here. I do not need you getting hurt. I, I need you for the show, man. I work for you. You're the one who gets hurt. I'm I'm safe. Nobody cares about me. You're the one talking about the uh, NWO and how they I, actually control everything. NW, NWA, get it right, bro. The Ali- that's a rap group out of South Central California. National Wrestling Alliance. There's that, no such thing. It's a lie. It exists. It's still out there. They control the wrestling um, society. They don't even know it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, good thing. Congratulations, uh, uh, Brody Lee. Yeah. Congratulations, Dark Order. <laughs> Their reaction on uh, social media was great. Their reaction on BTE was great. They're finally ro- bringing in that Chili's money that the elite just let slide by. Um, <sighs> but what was um, um, Brody Lee's wife's response to him? Oh partying? my god, it was great. Uh, so Instagram, I believe, or whatever. I it's a it's a platform I'm not on. Uh, <laughs> but I saw the post on Facebook because uh, it was shared there. 
Uh, and, you know, it's like Cody's just uh, not Cody. Uh, uh, Brody. Brody. Is like, I've been partying since Saturday night. This is a great, it was a wonderful weekend, lo- winning the championship. Everyone have fun. You know, and his wife responds with, you've been partying since Saturday night? Who's watching the kids? <laughs> Which, you know, any parent would be like, wait, what? You've been partying? Uh, who's with the kids? Brody's response was absolutely brilliant. Wait, we have kids? <laughs> Like, wait, we have kids? <laughs> Since when? Uh, I think maybe a little now, too plastered from all the partying. <laughs> now, I do like the fact, uh, so BTE, they're talking about the Chili's money that also now have come in for the Dark Order. Brody Lee doesn't even have grass on his lawn, but he bought six. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Six lawn mowers. Because... Uh, screw Adam Page. I. It really doesn't make sense why, but you know he did it. He did it. Uh, now in in not kayfabe though, I believe it was five. Um, actually, just bought his first new car huh. because of his work with AEW. It's the first time he's ever been able to buy a new car. Well, good for him. Congrats, yeah. man. I was like, you know what? Good. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, what I want to see, though, for the Dark Order, is I want to see John Silver accidentally get a shot at the AEW title. No, no, we're not going here. Every time just, you bring this up off rate topic, I just, just like, because roll your eyes. I, I want to see. I want to see that next level of Brody Lee being like, look, it was wonderful for the the Dark Order to to come together and celebrate my win of the TNT championship. But seriously, you won the AEW. I want to kill you so much right now. I want to see that reaction. And just like Silver being like, I, I'm sorry. I used the most devastating move in all of professional wrestling, the simple roll up and John Moxley was pinned. This is I have to defend it against him next week though. <laughs> This just proves to me that you are truly 100% a WWE mark who <laughs> wants to degrade the, the the prestige of the AEW World Championship. Look, don't deny it. You still won't tell, give me the money if, that you owe me for NXT from in that and the AEW money. Though so, I don't know why they would give you it after that you want to do this. So seeing it happen for like one week would be great. Where the very next week... Moxley's like, no, 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 I, there, I have a rematch clause. Get, we're, I'm getting that belt back. And the Dark Order's like, oh, you won it on your own the first time. so And he loses and gets beaten with papers after the end of it. But it would continue like the, the back and forth between Brody and Silver. where Silver can't help but laugh. That dude just is clearly the, the Dark Order is having fun with their segments. And I'm like... It's nice to see a company having people work for it. Yeah. That are having fun. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, obviously having fun and and clearly having input. Yeah. But no, no, John Silver is not winning the AEW World Championship Dang it. anytime soon. Son of a <laughs> All right. This week on a fantasy booking, John Silver <laughs> <laughs> gets a shot at the AEW Championship. Because he accidentally bumped into John Moxley in the background, and Moxley went, "You want a shot at me?" And Silver jokingly said, "Only if you put the belt up." <laughs> and the problem was Tony Khan heard it just just around the corner and went, "Book in the match." Both of them were like, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> John's like, "Oh God." Uh, I was joking. Brody Lee's like, good luck out there, little buddy. <laughs> no, he doesn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, no, he says nothing to the rest of the Dark Order. Because <laughs> he's just like, I don't want them to know. This is not going to end well. <laughs> Somehow wins with a schoolboy roll-up. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, but yes, congratulations. Pulling the tights as well. Good, congratulations, um, Brody Lee, for winning the title. You were yeah. a good person, but I will say this. The next person who wins the TNT Championship, please let it be someone who's not from WWE mostly known for WWE. Okay, okay, cuz that's a that's a very small list in the company. Well, see like I'm saying like I'd be okay with Pac winning it. Yes. Because he's been gone long enough 
that it'd be fine. I honestly think the best person I think they will probably be going for, I think I know, who's going to take it off, Brody Lee. Adam Page? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think they put the belt on Brody Lee, and then when Kenny and Omega... Um, Split go, up, he yeah. go, uh, Page goes after the... Uh, the U.S. Uh, the TNT ch- title. I want to really call it the U.S. title because that's what it kind of feels like. Well, that's what it is, but it's also their. Um, it's the, the TV title. It's the TV without title, calling it a TV title, which is a good thing because smart when, move. Because when you don't put it, you don't defend it on TV. You're not violating the goddamn rules of the belt. Exactly, uh, and then I would like to see Cody when he's, you know, healthy again, <laughs> come back and challenge. Join Paige. the four horsemen. I mean, we all know that's going to happen. But in reality, I would like to see him come back, challenge Paige for it. Paige retains over him. And he's like, now I have my second win over the Elite. And then eventually, when when he gets built up further for the AEW title, at double or nothing next year, <laughs> it's against Omega. It's against Kenny. You know, you know, former friend versus former friend. And, uh, like... Paige is like, I have to put away... What are you doing? Uh, hold on, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Paige is like, I have to put away the last member of the Elite. Adam, shut up. You're ruining my booking for fantasy booking. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> That's why I was doing that. I'm All right. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next subject. We got to talk about DC Fandom, which just happened the other week. This is a wrestling podcast. Yes, two wrestlers were presented, were were uh, part of it. One of them... I only heard about one. Okay. The well, other one I didn't see. Well, one of... Yeah. <laughs> one of them yeah, I'm is... I'm ruining your joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> one of... Uh, so, in the Suicide Squad game coming up, which is a follow-up to the Arkham series from Rocksteady... Which is a stupid game. Oh, you... <laughs> it's, it's a um, great series. Anyway... Uh, Samoa Joe is voicing King Shark in that game. Awesome move. I like him. Mm. Eh, just mm. whatever. And the other one is a behind-the-scenes uh, thing. Thing? <laughs> thing? It's not Te- really a trailer. It's not really teaser. a teaser. It was a teaser, a different type of teaser. Rogue One did this as well. Um, it was a teaser. Well, I think this one, a lot a lot of um, films are doing this. Big um, slated films. They're coming out next year. Yes, are doing this because uh, it's like okay, we're finally getting Hollywood back on track. So we're here. Getting ba- we're getting Look at back- our behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, we're gonna show some just to get some out there, um, which I think it was a, it's a good move overall. Um, but yeah, we got this. Apparently, John Cena was in this. There, I have. I, I looked at this. I've watched it a number of times. I can't see him. You mean the spot that you stopped and talked about his character on the, um, the Peacemaker? I don't. Um, there was nobody on screen, though. Yeah, nobody was, was on the screen. You literally point right at him. Shut up! You're <laughs> ruining the joke of. You can't see me. Well, I, exactly in, in, my point. In reality, I here's my my. There's a huge conspiracy theory, and this is why WWE had has been having to like do so many things to either get more money or save money. John Cena, actually CGI. It's Marco stunt in a suit. Dude, that was my joke that you're st- you, you stole. Ha <laughs> ha! You steal mine, I steal yours. <laughs> but here's the thing. That wasn't actually a funny joke, though. I know. It wasn't. That's why I knew you would steal it. Was it was hilarious. No, it wasn't. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta, we gotta talk about stupid people. We're closing out the show with stupid people at Thunderdome. So we're talking about you? Funny. Because <laughs> you would do something like this too. No, I would not. Not this far. I'm not. And did I say this far? Just so you, did, you would do something like this? No, I would not. I have limits. You, you would not put a picture of Owen Hart. Okay, so no, that's not the stupid people. That's cheeky. That's funny. You know, Chris Benoit being put up there. Uh, you know, a picture of Owen Hart. Uh. Heck, I'd even broadcast an entire episode of Dynamite on there. I don't know. And oh. Dark, because Dark's an hour long. Really? Well, at least you have taste. At least you wouldn't um, broadcast your stupid Noah. 
Ooh. Oh, God. I could do a couple of episodes of New England Wrestling Alliance on there. I shouldn't have said anything. That would be, that actually, thank you. Now you've given me an idea. The problem is there's a couple of people who have gone too far with this. How so? Uh, one person put up a video oh, of oh, a... Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Cite your source, sir. Well, that would be the WWE. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're punishing this kid already. I don't know who you're talking about. This WWE. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking I, about. <laughs> anyway, go um, <laughs> but one, I, I don't know if it was the same person who put up both of these or it was something else or multiple people. But um, there was somebody put up a video of a KKK rally. Oh, God. It's like. Okay, either you're saying that you support the KKK. If so, shame upon you. Um, or you think it's hilarious. It's not funny. No. That that's that's you've crossed the line. Like leaning up against you know a line like that where you're like, all right, you know I I'm gonna you know put Owen Hart a picture of Owen Hart. I'm gonna put Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, you know. Uh, Heck, even um, Adam, a censored version of the Hulk se- of the Hulk, the Hogan sex tape. So maybe, uh, um, Adam, I'm gonna have to completely disagree with you on this because the, this is just not too far. It just goes to show is to say that it just uh, telling that these people are pieces of shit. I mean, yeah, that that too, <laughs> that too. I mean, it, it, that's that's the moment that you find out that they're a piece of shit is when they cross the line. You, you the thought, other you, one, you thought, oh, no. I thought you were going to defend the person for a second there. I was actually sitting over here stunned. And you're like, wait, do I have a member of the KKK uh, on here? Do I have to cut Tim out of my life <laughs> after I cut Tim? I've got a knife over here. I'll cut you. Uh, anyway, I got a uh, flashlight. Can, yes, you do. I'll use, and I know how to use it. I was a security guard at my college. Look, uh, <laughs> I know we were talking about NXT Triple X, but we don't need to know how you use things. Anyway, uh, the other one that also grotesquely crossed the line was a video of a beheading. Oh, God. Now, it is on camera for... It's it's horribly like out of focus, okay? Because like, it's it's a bad quality video in the first mm-hmm. place, but you can tell what it is. Jeez, I'm like, look, that that might be funny in your under in your dark web, uh, social circle, but it's not funny. No, no, like snuff films are not funny. No, you um. and your friends might chuckle at sending each other grotesque things. But nobody else wants to see that shit. Yeah. And it was the fact that you put that on there, like I said, shows you're a piece of shit. Yes. So you were like, oh, I got it on national TV. Good for you. That's good. You're now a piece of shit. You, we just Everyone know, thinks you're a piece you, of shit. And guess what? You're gonna you're getting banned from the streams now, and they're looking at ways of banning you from all of our WB um, content. Like I, I honestly shows feel thing which you deserve. Yeah, I honestly feel that they should do an IP ban uh, from the network as well. Yeah. Now there is one more with that no is, refund. Yeah, and there's one more that is m- super crossing the line. Oh God, there's another one. Yeah, the it was one of the first ones too. I don't know how you missed this one. It was oh like no, the very first one. This was how. Dare you put a sign out that says "Fire the Velveteen Dream"? He is the masterpiece. He is a god of wrestling. Tim, and how Tim. dare you Tim. not? You know. Let me just let me just interrupt you for a quick yeah. second. Yeah. Um, Velveteen Dream, if the allegations about him are true, kind of a piece of shit. Cite your source. I don't have one outside of the allegations. Cite the allegations. Shit, I actually forgot. Oh, God. <laughs> exactly. It's part of the deep state. Oh, yeah, hold 5G on. Hold erased on. my memories. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, you're looking him up right now? How dare you not put more of those uh, Fire Velveteen Dream signs up? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, his, uh, look, I, I purposely didn't say those allegations, and I pretended that I forgot them, because, uh, okay, look, no, no. This is what people knew was going to happen, especially when it started trending um, like, I, the I, week before you start talking about Thunder Room and what you're going to let fans do. Yeah. Someone was going to do this. So, I really thought it was going to be something cheeky and, you know, AEW signs and, you know, heck, uh. <laughs> NWA signs. Did you, did you hear about the... Uh, an episode of NWA Power. Did you hear about the on the botch of the broadcast team? No. For the, the test? So they did a test um, to see how it was going to work. So um, on Thursday night. So they had a few people wrestling. And they had this filled a few. They refilled in spots. There were blank screens. Yes, across. I saw pictures of that. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there was a guy who was part of that, and they left his broadcast on for the meeting afterwards. And they were talking about how they don't want um, any AEW signs or T-shirts on there. He heard the entire production meeting afterwards. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, lesson going forward, make sure that the uh, cams and audio is done before you start talking in front of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is what everyone was going to, like, especially when you have this trending, you're like, you're going to put this in front of fan. No, no, I, I expected, bare... you know, hashtag fire Velveteen Dream. Yeah. You know, that that showing up. So the uh, of... AEW stuff showing up. I expect that. So apparently the, the solution to this to make sure this doesn't happen again. Yes, what is the uh, solution? Is they're going to put people, fans that, they are, that were reliable in those main roles. New people, first timers or anything, will be further back and only when they've proven themselves. So, in other words, no one's going to just behave, be a good fan until they get up front and then do it again. Yeah, you're going to have a troll that does that, that's going to make, that's going to work their way close, front row, and then suddenly put something up. Yeah. Which will cause a blank screen to happen for a moment before they double up a screen some from someplace else. Yeah. Like, but. I I don't know. Fan interaction is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Problem is, here in the United States, we have a mentality of fans taking over shows. Mm -hmm. We can't just sit there and enjoy them. You know, a TLC. You remember TLC. <laughs> uh, no, not TLC. Oh, uh, you, Total... You, you. Total Request Live, T TRL. Yeah. Uh, when the first time they did that, and the first number one song was uh, New Kids on the Block. <laughs> because they were like, "There's, n we're going to get everyone to vote for the same thing. Because there's no way they're going to put that up. They're going to put over what whatever they consider the number one hit that week will be up instead. And they're like, oh no, they are listening to the fans. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> and we just made the first number one song on TRL. New kids on the block hanging tough. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not a terrible song. It's from my childhood. But yeah, it's Her just... tough! But, you, <laughs> oh, you didn't hear about the other most devastating thing that someone did. Oh no, what else was that? There was a beach ball shown on camera. <laughs> Summer Slam. What? <laughs> the, no! The beach ball made its debut. Beach ball mania. <laughs> But yeah, no. It's oh my god, it would be great if like people were able to see where each other were. Yeah, yeah like and they all had like a beach ball, and they were like, "Hey!" They, 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 they toss it, and, and somebody else, else grabs it. it. Yeah. Okay, um, that would be cool. And all of a sudden, like um, Cesaro just appears on screen, <laughs> appears in somebody <laughs> else's thing, rips open the. No, he's like, it's just him backstage on his phone, but he grabs a beach ball, he rips it, and everyone's just like. <gasps> And no more beach ball. No more beach ball. <laughs> and everyone's like, okay. He's like, they respect that Cesaro did that. So they're just like, no one more beach ball. No more beach ball. <laughs> okay, that would be great. That would be awesome. But yeah, it's just like, but fans, no. like to, fans do like to take over the shows. Yeah. Most of the time when they take over the shows, it's showing their um, WWE, we don't like your product. Yes. We don't like what we're being seen. Well, so we're, we're going to entertain ourselves. Yeah. Uh, now, I do have to say, this idea of Thunderdome can be used like very easily to continue uh, to be a vehicle for retribution. They start. Can you imagine one of the times that somebody goes out there and they're pissed off at retribution and they go to call them out and all of the screens turn to them. <laughs> Suddenly it's just, it's, it's just people sitting in a black hoodie it's right there. And you're like, Oh, Oh, they, they actually took over. 
They've um, got control of our new of our feed. Oh, by the way, if anyone who's part of the the streams, uh, put a black hoodie and black mask on. And oh, just, just do it. Just do it. I want to see if we can get a bunch of people who. Um, like the entire arena. Uh, that people actually in the retribution. No, no, just uh, just put on a black yeah. hoodie. But like you know, it's just I'm not a fan of the Thunderdome just because when you get something that's supposed to be a pop and they had that cheer um, cheering going on that they pipe in. Yeah. And you just see you watch the people reacting. You have a few people going yeah, but most people are just like ambivalent to what's going because on because they don't care because they know it's a WWE product. Yeah. But it's just oh I get to be part of this, so why not? Yeah, no, it's I, I don't like it. I, I, I feel that it's an idea that can be good, but it, it might take a while before it actually gets used well. Now, it would be a cool idea to be using that as uh, as a vehicle for Cyber Sunday or <laughs> uh, whatever they've called. Uh, bring back the pay-per-view, Cyber Sunday. Have one, like, one pay-per-view a year where it's Thunderdome. <laughs> they bring back Thunderdome for the show. And you're like, okay. All right, I, I see, you know, what you're doing with this. It would be cool. It's yeah. a cool idea. No. It, it's cool. Um, no. All right, but, fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> see, if you really want to make the Thunderdome work, you got to make people who are actually in the um, on the screens follow cue. So when you they get something that says, you need to cheer, you need to pop, you have to follow that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, do you not know... I know audiences. I know, but they if don't. You, if they you're don't pipe, do that. But if you're piping in true WWE fans, a lot of them would listen. If yeah. you're doing your homework. Yeah, but who's but, doing that? I know. Who's Did doing that? Homework. Do our homework. You actually put effort into something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry, WWE writing staff. I know you actually put um, effort in. It's a 75 year old man who does who rips it up and rewrites everything because he doesn't like it. So I know you put hard work in, but everyone else doesn't. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that's interesting. That's all we got for you today. So uh, you got to the end of the show for how long? An hour and 20 Okay. Ish. Hours and 20-ish minutes. So go ahead and give that video a thumbs up. Because <laughs> uh, you've been listening for that long. Uh, since it's right there, go ahead and hit that subscribe Ding! button. Really? Oh, sorry. I was a little early on the button on that one. Sorry. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You don't hit that subscribe button. Ding. Ring Ding! That... <laughs> I'm sorry. A... I, I, I jumped on it again. I'm I, My bad. My bad. You, you're an idiot. I, I'm really excited this week. You're just trying to fuck with me. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you, want, you want to start that war, Adam? We can start that war. Anyway, ring that bell. Ding. And make sure you turn on all notifications so you know when all, um, as the buckle turn, and Zop Gaming content go live. Yes. Um, and make sure you ignore new World championship wrestling and turn into fantasy booking. Ignore fantasy booking and tune in to New England Wrestling Alliance Slam and Saturdays. Sorry, that last part got cut off because we don't know what you're talking about. It did not get cut off. <laughs> yeah. I am the editor here. I don't know what you're talking about. I am about. in control. Uh, and by the way, you can get bent like Adam. Adam. Yeah. You know. What? And 5G. All of that's getting cut out. All of that's getting cut out. You're not even going to have to be part of the show. <laughs> I'm just going to talk part. to myself the entire time. So you're going to have a 30-second show? Yeah, probably. <laughs>